Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I think the dossier that we have been waiting for from Right Honorable former Prime Minister Raila Molodinga is finally out. And I want to state categorically that we should not be taken into a political charade by the current crop of leadership. The Ruto leadership and the Ruto administration must come clear to make clarification on a couple of questions that Ray Lodinga has raised on that. I'm saying this because uh, you can mark this podcast. The next analysis I might do on this, it will be about how UDA is running political propaganda over that dossier. And I've listened to the 30-minute statement, 30-minute statement, and narrowed down some three issues that I think, according to me, deserves an answer. Ray Lodinga is saying that under G2G, he's saying first that there is no G2G. The Ministry of Energy and Petro got in contact, or rather entered into a deal with some three oil marketing companies in the country. And those three oil marketing companies in the country also got into a deal with some other three from the United Arab Emirates. So, what first must be discussed and should be answered is the question of what exactly is G2G? With the state-owned petroleum companies in the Middle East, why Ruto chose to characterize the deal as a G2G is the first red flag that points to mischief in this deal. We now know that the characterization of this deal as a G2G was meant to shield the three Kenyan companies from paying a 30% corporate tax. I will return to this matter later. Why have things moved from bad to worse since the deal was signed? Well, the deal was a scam for which we now demand full disclosure and full accountability. It is corrupt and rotten to the core. It is state capture by Mr. Ruto and company and a conspiracy against the country. Ruto's collapsing the country while feeding Kenyans on lullabies. Other than keeping the cost of oil permanently high in Kenya, the deal is costing the country dearly in terms of trade in petroleum with the landlocked neighbors. It is shrouded in deep secrecy. To date, only two documents have been made public. That is, the Master Framework Agreement with Petroleum Trading Entities and the Open Tender System Modified Agreement with Marketers. The Supplier Purchase Agreement between the Middle East oil firms and the hand-picked distributors in Kenya has never been seen. We challenge Mr. Ruto to publish this document. Nobody knows how Gulf Energy, Galana Oil Kenya Limited, and Oryx Energies Kenya Limited got nominated to handle local logistics. But the hand-picked distributors are selling oil to us at almost twice the price from bulk suppliers. These companies are also manipulating deliveries date ranges so that they can minimize on prices. We know that in August this year, four months after the deal, the government allowed Oryx Energies to sell oil at prices that had been inflated by 17%. In the Ruto deal, Oryx is a supplier of diesel to other oil marketing companies in the country. The excuse was to delay in discharging fuel at the jetty. 
from what from that sound from that sound bite Raila Odinga is explaining that the relationship rather the deal between Kenyan government and and those three the, the oil marketing companies in the country that got in contact with the international oil companies OMCs with the OICs is not clear and what is government in it because in fact it's a bit eye opener Oryx Galana and Gulf are these government companies or these are individual companies or these are private companies private companies given the nod to import oil how do that translate to G2G and Raila is saying the fact that it was G2G was already a red flag number 2 Raila is reading some pertinent question to William Root and the team is it true that the three companies did not pay or are exempted from the corporate tax Kenya should also have allowed the direct participation of the Uganda oil marketers in sourcing petroleum products through the northern corridor route but because corruption was written into the deal the route administration could not allow neighbors in in fear of exposure consequently the KPC is set to lose substantial business to Tanzania to Tanzania sorry Uganda shift the central corridor will most certainly influence Rwanda Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan as KPC loses business it will charge more for its product to stay afloat and the ever rising cost of petroleum products the deal only ended up creating irregular supplies and higher prices open tender system allowed for competitive sourcing of fuel monopolistic tendencies for purposes of maximizing profit goes against the demand for efficiency and the need for lower prices it is going to drive a number of oil marketing firms out of business leading to job losses and loss of revenue for the government the deal that Ruto signed with the oil companies as excessively high fights and premiums compared to those witnessed in the open tender systems they are as high as an additional $50 per metric ton in the end Kenya is losing billions of shillings in taxes because the three companies picked to spearhead this deal do not pay the 30% corporate tax. Shilling companies, uh, shilling the three companies from this tax is the reason Ruto told Kenyans that it was a G2G deal. The ESCC and the Director of Criminal Investigations must investigate the tax compliance status and pricing model of the three oil companies. That question should be and must be answered. Because, as you can hear, the hustlers, there was a rider in this country and that rider was everyone must pay tax so to lipo shuru to jitegeme the tax the, the the hustlers have been taxed to the last coin and people can even break their backs because of taxation how could it be that we want to collect revenues we even want to increase every fee on government service but we did we are not collected corporate tax from these companies and if it's not being collected where is it going that question is very important because uh, it's also another point of it points into who is exactly benefiting number two Raila has also made this statement that banks that are supposed to write the letter of credit the letter of credit is just garant is, is a guarantee to the United Arab Emirates that in any case the banks in any case those uh, companies 
will default or rather will fail to pay to meet their obligation in that deal, the banks will act on their behalf. So, Raila is also saying that uh, one of the reasons why we are having oil uh, challenge, as what he has explained there, is that because of that delay, that consignment of loading of that oil delays, and there is some charge into it, that charge has also been hiked. So apparently, we cannot be able to meet our obligation. What happened here is a complete rip-off. People are paying for air. And these people are very happy with this. We cannot be able to meet the obligation and that charge is transferred to the consumer. I think that also needs to be explained clearly. So the question of OMCs being exempted from corporate tax, the question of the banks complaining about letter of credit and the nitty gritties of G2G deserves an answer. I am saying this because, my good people, what you will hear tomorrow and the day after, by this weekend, you know, we are getting to Sunday, it will be personal attacks on Rai Ludinga and reminding Rai Ludinga why he did not create, do any expose about Uhuru Kenyatta. But I don't think that's where we need to. I listened to Osoro saying that that needs to be done because that's where Raila needs to start. We need to be truthful. If Raila was with the root Uhuru by then, and the William, the crop of leaders around William Ruto believes that there were things going on and they were quiet, then they were the ones that were supposed to do those exposes. They're the ones that were supposed to expose what Uhuru Kenyatta was allegedly doing wrong. Now, to William Ruto, and I want to address William Ruto on this. This dozier should not be, you will make, the state will be making a big pro, a big blunder. If they narrow down and twist Raila Dozier as a Raila affair. This dozier is deep for these three reasons. Number one, the banks are also complaining. So Ruto needs to know that if the banks are complaining, then they've just taken, sorry, I'm, I'm shooting this video outside and so there is some disruption. But uh, yeah, that's the challenge of sometimes doing it outside. So if the banks are complaining, then you believe this is also another player in that oil deal. And maybe who is feeding? Uh, how will Rayla know that the banks are complaining about it? Maybe the banks are involved in that expose. Number two, the Uganda access. Rayla Dinga has really referred to how Kenya is losing a deal, uh, the offer to Uganda, and seems to be speaking the language that Museveni was talking. So what William Ruto must also see is that the East African bloc, the Rwanda, DRC and the Uganda are fully behind Raila's dozier. And that is another point where I believe that they need to find it right. Number three, government officials. So government officials have also been named as part of this. If Kenya pipeline is falling because of this deal, then some people are at the brink of losing their jobs. And maybe these are the people that could even bank that dozier. So that was my three reasons why that dozier needs to be relooked keenly by William Ruto. While your political proxies will spend better part of their time attacking Rai Lodinga, William Ruto, call yourself into a meeting, from meeting in State House and do introspecting. Who is behind Raila dozier? What is Raila saying? I know everyone will try to narrow it to Raila. But I wish we, we move away from that. Well, it's just the messenger. This dozier could as well come from media. We will, we will still uh, bribe, we will still profit that media as Prozimio. But it had to come through Raila so that it gets the political weight. And so, this is why the Kenya Kwanzaa must tread with caution when dealing with this. I want to explain that, but before we get into, before I look at that, I want to say that um, if you are moving your office items from one place to the other, then you need to work with a reliable, trustworthy company that is also going to ensure that your things, the work is done professionally. I recommend to you Topmark Movers. Topmark Movers are the best companies in town in terms of mobility of your office items or household goods from one place to the other. Visit their website at www.topmarkmovers.co.ke 
or you can as well place a direct call to them at 07 19 17 43 93. Top Mac Movers, quality is everything. And support these young people there, guys. I, I like I like I like saying in my podcast, I have a very soft spot for someone doing something. Let's support those young uh, those young men doing something there. Three reasons why William Ruto must stretch, scratch his head over Ayla Dozias. Number one, the government has been silent over Uganda push. Last week, Uganda even passed a law. Oh, I get. They even passed a law that they want to import their oil through the central corridor. You know the Kenya is the northern corridor. So the central corridor is that of Tanzania. Now, government officials are staring at a possibility of Kenya losing the transit value. We are losing that transit value to Uganda. But government officials have been silent about it. Does it mean that they are defeated? Does it mean that what um, Seven is saying, that what Rala is saying, is something that has found them off guard? So it's high time that we look at it because if Uganda is withdrawing, and this has been going on in the social media spaces for some time, but there have been some quiet around uh, those who are supposed to give responses. William Ruto, we are losing some serious business to Tanzania. And Tanzania, I think you cannot compare Tanzania with Kenya. We are way above. We are way above Tanzania in, in terms of our investment hub. So let's not lose this business value over something we can. If there is something we cannot do, like Rala is saying, we need to bring things into books. Number three. Um, William Ruto must know that the prices of commodities in this country, the inflation that we are suffering in this country is largely because of cost of fuel. The inflation we are... The inflation that we are suffering is because of uh, we are suffering of is because of cost of well now when Rayla, as Rayla starts this discussion there is something that is coming up the discussion about the cost of fuel and as i analyzed there have been more than 90 protests in different countries in the continent because of in different continents because of fuel now where public is clearly coming to understand and the public will narrow down while you can have every reason that inflation is we have inflation because of the war in ukraine and the way in ukraine and the palestine and israel you can have that explanation but when the raila dozier comes out and the public comes to understand that indeed it's not it it's what raila is saying then i'm telling you these people will protest william ruto the public will protest. It can take different forms. Maybe people might not go to the street, but the protest will crop. Lastly, this issue of fuel has plunged the economy into uncertainty. Plunged us, the country, into economic uncertainty. And it's at the risk of causing economic meltdown. I need to explain something. G2G was supposed to solve, number one, manage our shilling it has failed g2g was supposed to stabilize it was supposed to number one stabilize the fuel prices in fact it has not been stabilized it's been raised now it was also supposed to lower that has also failed in fact it has exposed us into some political quagmire into some economic quagmire with the neighboring countries so the real intention of this was supposed to help us if g2g has failed to meet its target then call it off if you have that clause to call it off because we have opened before g2g we had nine oil marketing companies importing and it was on a competitive basis. Now, when you did the open tendering and gave these three companies, 
we have introduced a monopolistic market in a multi-dollar industry. William Ruto, what we have done as G2G has created monopoly. We are three companies are working within their own premises to manage the prices. If you leave it competitive, we might get a solution. Anne Joroge is in court saying she imported diesel from Europe and that would be at a lower price. So what does it show? Allow then Kenyans, to those who are willing and able to have the finances, to import oil in the country. Then when you have an oil flux, uh, an, 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 oil, an oil glut here, then the prices will just stabilize using the supply demand curve. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? That is my bold podcast. Is this on a journey? Picture. I saw. Hi guys. So uh, we are here as we had promised that we are coming to uh, this other side of Kibera to deliver the wheelchairs. So because of the other residential training that uh, the mothers yeah. of the kids had, we had to reschedule to this Sunday. And uh, we've come here to Mekuja. We've brought the five wheelchairs that we had earlier uh, stated. Even though to, we've not, was as we get how to make, we met, to manage around three, yeah? yeah? To manage three, others are absent. But we've had the three that were Kohapa. But the other wheelchairs we have, so to not believe Kwamba the team is our Patia, uh, Teresa Kupewa, the wheelchairs. Now, I want to introduce, not introduce, but I want to give uh, each parent at a sema something a minute. But before them, I need to introduce these two ladies around me. I know you're seeing them for, you've seen them for a second time. So, Kamira is normally our admin. Sasa Tukisha Fanya, she's the person that, uh, an engine behind all this. And we also have uh, Els on this end. So, Kamira, it's a bit of a now to Okay, so uh, for me, I'm just going to say thank you for the people who came through. As you can see, we were able to get the five wheelchairs. And thank you so much for what when you're here to come through for us to pay the funds. We really appreciate. And uh, also for the management, we just want to believe that when you're here to come through for us, we're going to pay the funds. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure. Mama Benja, I say something to you. Okay. Mimi nasema ni asante kwa hiyo organization yenu ambayo mmeamua mnasaidia watoto wenye kuna disability pia nashukuru kwa hii wilche ambayo mmetusaidia nayo kama mimi nilikuwa already watu walikuwa wananicheka kila wakati ni mtoto wa kuko mgongo so nimefurahia kwa sababu Benjamin atakapokalia hii wilche itakuwa ni kazi rahisi ni kumskuma tu nikimlete therapy maybe nataka kuenda somewhere ni kusukuma tu na shukuru kwa hayo ambayo mmetenda na muzidi kutenda mbarikiwe mbarikiwe sana ni hayo tu na mbarikiwe Na mimi naitwa Sara Kemto, mama Gloria. Gloria ndio huyu already amekalia wheelchair. Na mimi nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu yenu Mungu amewatumia, mmekuja kutusaidia ndio watoto kama Gloria ni mkubwa kumbeba kwa mgongo ni shida. Nashukuru Mungu Gloria amepata wheelchair ataendea shule Januari. Wacha Mungu awabariki. Mali hiyo pesa imetoka na Mungu airudishe. Mbarikiwe sana na Mungu awaongeze. Nimeshukuru. Thank you. Yes so, yes on behalf of this amazing team, Asante Sara, um, I'm just sure of what we I we mentioned that uh, 
intervention ya disability we will try to still upscale ni me realize kwamba the figures the number of kids in need of wheelchairs ni wengi sana we cannot but I, i believe with this start as we roll into 2024 we'll be able to support and develop this as a full program and uh, uh, support yeah, the team that we have here so that uh, for a certain time.